Hello everyone and welcome to The Art Show on Wickham Sound. I am your host, Dane Cobain. This is the show where we talk about the local art scene. We try to talk to local authors, musicians, creatives. Have a bit of a natter about sort of arts culture, I suppose. Play some local music as well. And uh, yeah, have a bit of fun while we're at it. So we're on every Tuesday at 7 till 8 p.m. So if you're new here, please do come back and join us some other time. We're on Facebook at The Art Show on Wickham Sound. If you just give it a little bit of a Google, you should be able to find it. And you can also contact me here at the studio on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk. We're always on the lookout for interesting guests to have on the show, so if you do something cool, artsy and creative in the uh, High Wycombe area, then please do get in touch. And also if you're a musician or a poet or anything like that, then uh, let us know if you've got any recorded tracks and we'll, we'll do what we can to play them. So before we jump on in and start chatting to this week's guest, who's going to be local musician and songwriter Colin Upfield, I have a little bit of a life update to share with you. So um, I've started working at Wickham Arts Centre. I'll be there sort of part time, mostly helping out with social media marketing and stuff and also uh, with odd jobs around the place uh, here and there as needed. But obviously that means I hopefully can give you guys more of an update on what's going on there too. I will be trying to get um, possibly Ruth, one of the board members, to come on the show at some point to talk more about what's uh, what's coming up at the Arts Centre. But obviously, um, it's all a bit in the air at the moment, pending further updates from the government uh, due to COVID-19. So we do have a little bit of an update, which I'm going to read out to you now just to kind of let you know what's been happening there. Uh, the Arts Centre is just off, well, it's on Desper Road, and uh, you can't miss it. It's a converted church. It's one of my uh, favourite venues. And actually... Uh, I think Colin mentions it later on when, when we chat to him. All right, so a quick update from the Wickham Arts Centre team. First of all, we hope you've all been safe and well during this difficult and uncertain time. We've been keeping up to date with the latest government guidelines on social distancing and public safety, and we're working hard behind the scenes to make sure that once we're able to safely and legally reopen, we'll be ready. In particular, we've spent a lot of time on cleaning and maintenance and on the ground and gardens with our partners at Social Link, including the launch of a new allotment project. Watch this space and follow their page for further updates. It's likely to be a while before we can host bigger events, but in the interim period, we'll be offering our larger theatre space for the same price as the cafe space to enable social distancing to be maintained. We may be able to host outdoor events too, if it ever stops raining. Until then, we'd like to say a big thank you to you all for your patience. Stay safe. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled on their uh, Facebook. There's uh, Wickham Art Centre on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, there's wickhamartcentre.com as well, so you can look there for the latest events and whatnot. And I'll uh, be sure to share any news in uh, the coming weeks. I mean, part of what this show was originally supposed to be about was to kind of share event listings for things like open mic nights, live music, uh, you know, theatre shows, uh, pantomimes, all of that kind of stuff. But obviously, just as we were starting the art show, pandemic kicks in and everything got cancelled. So uh, hopefully as uh, restrictions start to lift, we can we can get back to that. Another thing I wanted to talk about this week is, well, I, I just want to talk about the idea of um, writers and um, the, the goal of trying to sort of almost pre predict the future. So Isaac Asimov is a great example of this because he's um, probably the most iconic science fiction writer ever to have lived. And, you know, there are, there are books of his where I've read where in the 1950s he was talking about climate change and um, a lot of the predict predictions he makes about AI and uh, the future of robotics, are, you know, pretty close to the bone uh, today. And Asimov is also responsible for the three laws of robotics, which um, basically govern how a robot can behave and stop them from harming humans and stuff. But uh, yeah, I just find it a fascinating area of discussion, really. But I also think he himself knew that like people were in many ways taking his predictions too seriously. So he actually wrote one story where he talked about... Um, he basically predicted that nobody would ever climb Everest, but he predicted it six months after Sir Edmund Hillary climbed Everest, um, just to poke a bit of fun. And actually, that's one of the things I really like about Asimov's work. He, uh, in most of his short story collections, he writes little introductions to each of the stories. And so you can kind of find out a little bit more of the context behind them, uh, where the ideas came from, that kind of thing. And I want to read one of those out to you now, one of those little introductory essays. So this is Isaac Asimov's introduction to a short story called What If? So he writes, Easily the most frequently asked question put to any writer of science fiction stories is, where do you get your ideas? I imagine the person who asked the question is sure that there is some mysterious kind of inspiration that can only be produced by odd and possibly illicit means, or that the writer goes through an eldritch ritual that may even involve calling up the devil. 
But the answer is only, you can get an idea from anything if you're willing to think hard enough and long enough. That long and hard bit seems to disillusion people. Their admiration for you drops precipitously and you get the feeling you've exposed yourself as an imposter. After all, if long and hard is all it takes, anyone can do it. Strange then that so few do. Anyway, my wife once broke down and asked me that question even though she knows I dislike having it asked. We'd moved to the Boston area in 1949 when I took my position with Boston University School of Medicine and periodically we made a train trip back to New York to visit our respective families. Once on one of those train trips, perhaps out of boredom, she asked the question. I said, from anything, I can probably get one out of this train trip if I try. Go ahead, she said, naturally enough. So I thought hard and told her the story of a train trip which, when I got back home, I typed up in permanent form and called What If? The story is unusual for me in another respect too. I'm not strong on romance in my stories. Why that should be, I will leave to the parlour psychoanalyst. I merely state the fact. Sometimes I do have women in my stories. On rare occasions, as in Hostess, the woman is even the protagonist. But even then, romance is a minor factor, if it appears at all. In What If, however, the story is all romance. Each time I think of that, the fact startles me. I believe it is the only one of my many stories that is all serious, as opposed to ribald romance. Heavens. So I really love this discussion of, uh, you know, where you get your ideas from. I don't know, I, I'm the same as, as a writer. It does drive me crazy when people repeatedly ask me that question. But I also like to see the way that other writers respond to it. So um, I don't know, there's, there's something that, about that question that just holds this sort of perpetual fascination for me. One other thing I wanted to mention as well is um, I was watching a documentary the other day and somebody said that uh, it's the job of uh, a science fiction writer to imagine traffic jams, not the car. And I just think that's a really good way of looking at it. And um, Asimov does that really well when he um, when he writes stuff. He, he doesn't look at the technology per se. He looks at the implications that that would have for society. Anyway, we're going to listen to a little bit of music now and then we're going to chat to local singer and songwriter Colin Upfield and uh, yeah this is Sugar Mice by Fabless Parfait I was flicking through the channels on the TV on a Sunday in B Sinatra calling me down through the floor of the vault Where you pay a quarter for a partnership in rhyme To the jukebox crying in the corner While the waitress is counting out the time When it gets right down to it, there's no use trying to pretend. For when it gets right down to it, there's no one here that's left to blame. And blame it on me. Oh, you can blame it on me. We just sugar my. Cause I know what I want, know what I feel, I know what I need Your daddy took a rage check, your daddy took a rage check Ain't no one in here that's left to blame Blame it on me. 
Well, the toughest thing that I ever did was talk to the kids on the phone. When I heard them asking questions, I knew that you were all alone. Can't you understand that the government left me out of work? I just couldn't stand the looks on their faces saying, what a jerk. So if you want my address, it's number one at the end of the bar. Where I sit with the broken angels Clutching at straws and nursing all scars Blame it on me You can blame it on me Sugar mice in the rain Love music, love talk, love Wickham Sound. Being a foster carer isn't just about providing vulnerable children a safe home. It's about loving, listening and guiding. It's about changing their lives. If there's space in your home and you have the time and patience, then Nexus Fostering wants to hear from you. We're your local fostering agency, rated outstanding by Ofsted, and we're here to support you in supporting them with full training and a competitive allowance. For a career that really makes a difference, visit nexusfostering.co.uk or call 0800 389-0143. From the 1st of April, your new Buckinghamshire Council will replace the existing county and district councils and continue to deliver all the services you are used to. Visit buckinghamshire.gov.uk Sunday evenings on Wickham Sound. If your idea of a fun festival experience is a mashup of metal, grime, blues, folk, pop, with a smattering of electro, hip-hop, Indian grunge, not forgetting punk, then join me, Paul, for the alternative Wickstape at 11pm on Wickham Sound 106.6 FM every Sunday. I can even guarantee that the weather will be fine. This is Wickham Sound. It ain't snow Oh, she's seen all kinds of weather Oh, and yes, and yes, she knows She's seen, she's seen it all To make a wonder, make a wonder, make a wonder Wake her up, she's been To the soiree, but the last one to go. Oh, with the young folk around her. Oh, and yes, and yes, she knows. She'll tell you of the three gods song, a word you'll hang on until it makes you wonder. Makes you wonder, makes you wonder, wakes you up. She'll make you wanna fall in love. 
For a reason you don't understand And it makes you wonder Makes you wonder Makes you wonder Makes you stop Just let me all in now Do you really want to know The tale of the river The tale of this great old town Just let me all in was Maz Manzini with Agnes and before that we had Sugar Mice by Fabless Parfait. My name's Dane Cobain, you're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM at Wickham Sound and I am joined now by local singer and songwriter Colin Upfield. The first question I've been asking everybody is uh, what was the last book that you read and what did you think of it? Um, last book I read was a Ben Elton book actually. Oh right, yeah, yeah. It what? was, I don't know what it was called, it was one that was all about, it was all about sort of um, sort of Facebook gone mad right yeah it was, like a, it, was, it was like a black mirror of like the entire world was like social media and no one had any privacy um it was it, it was it was quite good it, it was quite a depressing book by the end sort of nobody won really mm. on those, but then Ben books tend to be quite bleak yeah sort of endings uh but it, it was a good book and um I think Ben Elton's a really good writer I find he's a I like his characters and, and he writes He's what makes you think. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yes, I mean it's kind of social. You, you sort of, you sort of get, you're, you're, you're getting social commentary without kind of without almost realising you, um, uh, you're being given social, social commentary, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. I get yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, so I so I really enjoyed it actually. It's, it's the first bit book I've read in years. So. Well, it's it's funny because so what I was going to say is um, he's one of those authors I, I see him around in charity shops and stuff. And I've never got round to picking up any of his books and keep meaning to. But um, that that plot that you've just sort of described, that's exactly the kind of thing I like. And uh, as you said, these kind of stories where, you know, it's a story and you're enjoying it just for the story. But as you go along, you start to think about whatever it is, whether it's morality yeah. or yeah, freedom. I think that's sort of been the, sort of, uh, the, the last few days where, the, where, the, where there's been all this stuff about... Um you know, banning Gone with the Wind mm-hmm. and all these sorts of um, censorship issues that have been coming out of this 
Black Lives Matter sort of um, stuff and the statues and everything, it kind of you you extrapolate that upwards sort of, sort of to an extreme, and it's not far away from what, what this book is kind of showing. Yeah, yeah, it's quite scary, you know. Sort of they sort of banned all um, science has basically been banned is um, sort of lies and basically the, uh, the, uh, the church is running the country. Yeah. And, Everything's about God, and all the old, so all the old books have been banned because they're blasphemous and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. which kind of feels like not a million miles away from where we're heading at the moment. No, and certainly in like certain parts of America where it's like where you know evolution has to be taught as a theory alongside the theory yeah. that the Earth's six thousand years old and stuff. So one of the reasons I want to chat to you today is obviously uh, about your music. Um, do yeah. you want to do you want to give us a little bit of a lowdown? You know, how long have you been playing music? How did you get started? And also, um, what instruments do you play? Okay, well, I started sort of in my sort of mid teens. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a piano in the house. Uh, my mum used to play piano, uh, and we sort of, my, my brother and I both just sort of kind of started sort of plinking around on it. Um, my brother sort of went from strength to strength and became really good quite quickly. I was never great, but I sort of wrote my first few sort of songs on the piano, just sort of banging out chords, um, and they were all. T typical mid teenager uh, angst, <laughs> oh, worries me, everybody hates me type of songs. Um, then my dad got a nylon string guitar mm -hmm. one Christmas because he said he, he had nothing else he wanted and he said he'd like to learn, and he gave up on it after about three months. But again, um, my brother and I both picked it up and started playing it, and I've just kind of played guitar ever since, mm -hmm. and it's one of the best things I've ever learned I was fine like so I'd, so I'd say learning to drive and learn, learning to play an instrument mm. are two of the best things I've ever done because they give you a, a freedom and a release that you can't get from anything else but um, I then sort of was uh, my, my brother was doing some music in school and he was very much he, he's more into recording producing kind of side of things and so he and I used to start recording songs in the bedroom on an old Tascam four track mm -hmm. tape recorder and uh, sort of uh, Casio keyboards and the like, um, uh, and then I sort of did nothing with it. I sort of did it. It was truly a home bedroom kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then about three or four years ago, I thought, you know, because I wasn't really doing much with, with my brother anymore because he's just down in Bournemouth now. But mm -hmm. we still do recording backs and forwards, like on sort of files, sort of files through the cloud. Yeah. But um, I thought, no, you know, well, I'm going to go out and do it. So I went out and sort of did an open mic locally. Mm -hmm. First one I ever did, absolutely terrifying. The first time I did. <laughs> But sort of put me out of my comfort zone, so I sort of and I enjoyed it, and I kind of got, got back into it, and been doing it ever since, really. And it was um, for me, I'm, I'm quite a shy person, quite a nervous mm -hmm. person, and it was that getting out of my comfort zone and just going and doing it, standing on a stage and playing. And I, I did a thing about two years ago. I did a musical at, um, at the, the Wickham Arts Centre, mm -hmm. sort of did Joseph, and again, I've never done a musical before. It was a uh, out of my comfort zone, something I wanted to go and do. So I went and did that. And um, here I am. So I've, all, I've got quite a lot of stuff recorded, and, and, and it's all online. But I'm not not getting any traction on it. Nobody's sort of listening to it or mm. viewing it really. Well, it's, I suppose it's a difficult marketplace as well because that you know there are so many musicians, and now it's a global thing as well. So it's it's difficult to yeah. get heard through the noise. It's it's double edged sword. I mean, it's wonderful the fact now you don't have to get, a, get go and get a recording contract and be spotted. You can actually publish your own music. Mm. But yeah, you and millions of other people. And it's a case of you. It's about, I think you're still in that position of almost getting a lucky break. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 somebody hearing something and it going viral, and suddenly you go. Because otherwise, you're just another sound in the crowd. I mean, there's so many sort of amateur and I mean, sort of even locally, but on, mm. on YouTube, some uh, musicians and singers and writers are absolutely brilliant. Yeah. But they're not getting the traction, and there's people that are you know, getting millions of hits on YouTube. That, in my opinion, don't. Aren't, aren't any better or even as good as some of those mm -hmm. people because i've kind of noticed a similar thing as well but do you think it's maybe because sort of on youtube there's there's kind of a pressure to be an entertainer i suppose as opposed to being a, a pure musician if that makes sense i think um on youtube there's an element of uh, the visual becomes relevant yeah um, I, I think you've got to have an quite a catchy video or, or something interesting happening visually mm -hmm. uh, because otherwise so people will just click on and the trouble is I think the attention span of people now in this, this day and age is um, not very good at all so yeah. you've, you've probably got about 15 seconds almost to sort of catch someone's attention I mean I find so when, when you look at my stats on YouTube 
sort of videos very sort of very rarely get watched beyond, sort of beyond a minute. Yeah. And it's kind of they go, oh, yeah, well, I've got the gist of that. I'm gonna, I've, I've got loads of other content I want to go and uh, consume as well. Yes, so yeah. I'm going to move on. And I, I think people don't. It's like with, with Spotify and all that. I mean, it's brilliant that you've suddenly got millions of music, and and you're not, you, and people people are ex- being exposed to a much broader range of music, which is excellent. Yeah. You know, in the old days, it was a case of most people, so certainly younger people, if it wasn't in the charts. They didn't get exposed to it. Mm-hmm. They didn't even know it existed. Some of them. So I think it's great that you can go around and get that. The other side of that is the fact that um, people don't listen to albums anymore. People just listen to playlists and yeah. they listen to shuffle, and, and everyone just has a thousand songs in a list and they shuffle them. Yeah. So I think <laughs> people don't. And you get a different experience sitting down and taking that time to listen to an album and listen to one artist all the way through and get that theme and that what, what they were trying to say and what they were trying to do. Yeah. I think that's been lost. I mean. So music again also has become a lot more um, throwaway, much more um, poppy, I guess. Yeah, I I definitely think that when um, even when you just listen to what's on the radio and you listen to the lyrics, like I mean maybe I don't know, maybe it's just a sort of sign of aging. But I'm sure, like years ago, even <laughs> even the most popular songs, you know, they would still sometimes would have some good lyrics, and I don't know things like. I don't know, like a song like I Don't Like Mondays or something, which when you think about yeah. it, it's, you know, it's actually really, really deep. And then you put on the radio today and it's just, you know, people s- singing about they're going to go out on Friday night. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think pop is all, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to view it right back. I mean, you think about rock and roll. Mm. I mean, most of those songs are nonsense. Yes, and, no, and, and, yeah. and are very trite with their lyrics. But there's always been good and bad. I, I think the other thing that's happening in modern pop music that I feel is there's a death of melody. Mm-hmm. Everything's very um, monotonal, and, and pop music become much more about the rhythm yeah. of it and the and syncopation of it rather than the actual melody. You can't hum most pop, modern pop songs because they're almost yeah. on a single note. Yeah. Them. And I find that's um, and I'm very much into the words and, and and into a good melody that you can sing along to. Yeah. So I find that sort of why modern music doesn't really grab me and um i want to want to touch on um obviously you you mentioned that you're a songwriter and you've just yeah. talked about you know you it's important to get the melody and it's important to get the lyrics so what what does the songwriting process look to, look like to you do you start with one of them first or how do you go um, about it gem- generally i'll start with the words mm-hmm. often i'll start with a phrase yeah and then um mm-hmm. then it's just a case of noodling around on the guitar normally until i get something um I find I'm much better writing verses than I am choruses. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not good at hooks. And I think also because of the, the tendency when you're playing like a rhythm guitar and singing, you don't leave gaps in the music. Yeah. So you don't, so you don't have riffs and you don't have those um, musical hooks. You tend to, all the hooks come from the vocal and come from the melody. And I think that you, you listen to most great hooks and songs and they're normally not the vocal. They're a, a really great guitar riff or a really good keyboard line or a saxophone Know, blast or something mm-hmm. like that so I find it's hard for me to write catchy songs in that respect but I tend to sort of start with the words so it'll usually be a phrase which will be a jumping off point yeah. I mean the thing I did recently with the um, with the open mic slate group where the, the music is the glue yeah. was the sort of the oh, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. so I sort of started out as a jumping off point and then from that you just start to sort of yeah, you just start throwing out lines and seeing yeah. what sticks, ironically. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like a version of improv where you can edit it, I guess, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think it's um, and it's been quite so. There's been some of my older songs where I've gone back, and there's sometimes you, so I can see a line in a song where the only reason it's there was because I couldn't think of anything else that rhymed, yeah. you know, and it kind of just is there to kind of fill in that gap. There's been a couple of my older songs where I've actually gone back and. When I do them now, I've changed yeah. the wording slightly and, and put a better lyric in there because I was looking, so years later it's come to me. Oh, actually, what that needs is that line there. Yeah. And so, but I think, um, yeah, I think the words come first for me, and then the melody. So, Colin, you picked out a couple of the tracks that you'd uh, like us to uh, play today. So, I wondered if you could introduce them both, and then we will cut to the first one now, and we'll listen to the second one at the uh, end of the interview. Okay. So. Um, uh, the first one is Mona Lisa Smile. Uh, wrote this a long time ago. I actually wrote this um, walking to the pub. Um, I, I remember looking up at the night sky and that kind of line came into my head and the whole song was built from that 
sort of looking in your eyes, just looking at, he's like looking at the night sky, which Jason Mraz stole from me about 10 years mm-hmm. later, which is a bit frustrating. But uh, I think it's the best pop song I've ever written, mm-hmm. and I think generally when I play at open mics, it's probably the one I get the most positive feedback from people. So yeah. that would definitely be the first song to play. I, I think it's my favourite of yours as well. So. Yeah. And the other one I'd like is uh, my um, Didn't Die film uh, song, because... It's important to me because we wrote it for my father's funeral. Yeah. Um, it's based on the poem Do Not Stand at My Grave and Weep, but we obviously put it to music. Uh, my brother recorded it and well, arranged it, and then I sort of recorded the vocals on mm. it. And also, we got, I mean, we've added a, a, um, additional words. The, 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 the middle eight is completely us. And so, um, and I think that's a nice contrast of. You know, the up-tempo pop of Mona Lisa to the more mellow ballad of I Didn't Die. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah, it uh, shows some different styles. Cool. Yeah. So let's go ahead and listen to Mona Lisa Smile by Colin Upfield. Well, 
This is Wickham Sound. That was Mona Lisa Smile by Colin Upfield. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. And I'm joined by the man himself, Colin Upfield, to talk about music, songwriting and more. I suppose quite often as well, the melody actually underlines the words, you know, like there are quite a few songs where, it, you know, you need the words first because then, as you said, as I said, the melody like reflects what's going on in the lyrics. Yeah, yeah, because you can make it, if, if, the, if it's an angry sort of lyric, then yeah, the music can, mm. yeah, you can make music more staccato or you make it more loud or... Mm attacking um, if there's highs and lows you, you, the music tends to go high and low so yeah I, I agree I mean what I tend to do if when I'm recording stuff is because I'm not an arranger by any means mm-hmm. I, I tend to sort of create the song on my guitar with a vocal I then send it down to my brother with some notes of what it sounds like in my head if you like yeah. and then he'll knock up a mix send it back and we're, and we're back and forth for a couple of days until he comes until we're both happy with it and then I'll lay down some vocals here send those down to him and he'll mix it all on the back and forth again and, and we'll we talk about some harmonies and the back and vocals mm. and so it, it's quite an interesting collaborative process but it, the file thing makes it quite long winded yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we did a thing a few years ago um, uh, my, my brother wrote the music from, from my, uh, my best mate's a wedding mm-hmm. for signing the registry and so as a, a thank you for that he bought um, a studio afternoon for me and my member oh, nice. so we got together in the same room which we hadn't done for a long time and actually worked together to create a song and cracked out a song in an hour yeah. you know and it was just because you uh, you can't bounce off someone creatively remotely when, when someone's in the same room there's a creative kind of connection and ideas flow and people build on each other's ideas and I quite miss not doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you do it with um, Dave, don't you? Yeah, so yeah. Sort of scenario. Well, it's, it's funny as well because I think it, it, in general it's had to become a thing over the last three months as well. Like, if anybody has wanted to do any music, that's how we've had to do it, you know? But I almost feel yeah. like that, that might actually be a good thing because even moving forwards, you know, I just, I think it could be a good thing to sort of, I guess, to learn to work a bit more like that. Um, obviously when you're recording from home you don't have access to like the high quality recording equipment which is I think yeah. what's, what's really missed but you know there's no reason why after the pandemic you know we can't almost still be recording remotely you know going into a re- studio one at a time to maintain social distancing and whatnot and be mixed by someone 200 miles away because we're all kind of used <laughs> used to doing it now anyway <laughs> well we did it I mean we actually did it sort of not this Christmas Christmas before mm. um, my, my brother and a, a, a group of his mates who were, who were all musical, and we did a version of Dylan Knows Christmas. Yeah. And there were 15 of us on that record, and not a single one of us ever met. Yeah. So we all literally just, we all recorded the vocals in our bedrooms, and then we all recorded like a a, a face video of us singing it. So yeah. exactly what people are now doing for these full full these yeah. lockdown sort of, collab, sort of collaborations, we did 18 months ago. So you're the innovators then. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're sort of pushing back the envelope. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it was absolutely great fun, and, 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 it, was, and it, was, it, it is a really satisfying thing when it comes together like that, mm. and you see that product of all those sort of disparate parts becoming yeah. a whole. Yeah, because as you it, as it, you go along, you can't see it as well, so you don't really know until you see the end product whether it's yeah. actually going to work. Yeah, so I've enjoyed that, but I've been working remotely with, with my brother for yeah. years, so it's not that unusual for me. But I do miss that. Thing. and I've not really worked with many other people yeah. I've found so on the other occasions where I've done it so musicians have a tendency if they get together without any kind of direct purpose to just end up um, sort of noodling themselves in corners and not really actually getting very much done from my experience and so um, I want to follow up with you mentioned earlier that you you know you, you started going to open mics and obviously that's how we know each other as well. And I was yeah. just wondering sort of what are some of your favourite open mics in Wickham when, when they're on, obviously? Um, um, the first one I did was Rose and Crown, which is mm-hmm. obviously sadly gone now. I mean, they still do it, they do, but oh, Cedric's not there anymore. Yeah. Um, it's more of a jam, I think. I really enjoy time. because what I like about the Arts Centre is, um, A, it's a stage, which, mm-hmm. which not, not many of these ones are, so that's nice. You get, you've get you got a decent sound system and it's a much more... Um, 
considerate audience mm-hmm. in that I, I, from, I find a tendency when I'm in a pub that I have to do covers yeah. because people people don't want to hear your original stuff they just want to hear something they can sing along to or hum along to if they want you to be there at all and I find the arts centre you can be a bit more experimental you can, you can try stuff out and you can be a bit more play stuff you wouldn't play in other places and you'll get you know, some positive feedback mm. I mean I find and it, so I, I do that one regularly I do the Bell in Princess of Risborough mm-hmm. um, which is never very busy but I like it as a pub and the, and, and, and the plus side of it never, never being very busy is you get to do seven or eight songs yeah. so you virtually get to do a mini set which is always quite nice because um, I find it quite difficult if you've got three songs to actually pick three songs you want to do and yeah. you do want to do an original which ones you do whereas with seven or seven songs you can kind of throw a few things in and still keep people happy and stick it and you can stick an original in there without sort of upsetting the, the upper card too yeah. much yeah. so I do that one a lot um, and there's one in uh, Chalfont uh, the Griffin which mm. I do which is fortnightly which, which I do at least once a month and I really like that one because the guy who runs it's a really nice guy and being over in Chalfont, well not Chalfont, so it's in Chesham. Right. So being over in being over in Chesham, uh, it's a completely different set of people, and yeah. it's just nice to see some different musicians playing some different music, because it's quite a small community, the yeah. open mic, in in Wickham, and you tend to meet the same people at every open mic you go to. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. so, it, and most people have a repertoire of songs which. You're un- they're unlikely to play a song you've not heard before yeah, if yeah. you've seen them three or four times. I mean, myself included in that. But I do try and sort of put at least one new song in a month just for my own uh, sanity as much as anything else. Yeah. But I'm not found with this, um, th- this open mic slay group which yeah. I've been doing on Facebook and I've been posting a song a day. And that's been really challenging because, I mean, I'm in, I'm, in the high, I'm in the high 80s now. Yeah, because it's been, been a fair old while, yeah. Yeah, and um, that's... I found actually my it's improved my playing because yeah. I'm because I'm playing every day and I'm I've actually learned a few new songs along the way and it's, I think my performance has improved as a result of doing those things. Just sitting there videoing myself, you can be a lot more critical and you can sit and watch it back and go actually no, I need to change that and yeah, move yeah. that. So I've actually found that's been quite um, beneficial to me. As well. I, I think I will be a better performer. Yeah when we do finally get back in the pubs well and, and you'll know your like your repertoire of songs better as well you know so yeah win-win. And, and, and i'll have a few more in my yeah as well hopefully i mean th- actually this is something i was going to follow up with because i 100 percent agree with you on the uh well on the, a few things really where as you were saying wickham's got quite a small um sort of music community um no, not in a bad way as well it means it's quite not, uh, tightly knit you know but it, no, and, and the, the, the brilliant bunch of people yeah and like You'll never ever have anyone you know, have, be nasty or have a bad word. I mean, everyone's really supportive and really positive. Yeah. And you just need that because there's people getting up there, bearing their souls, and they're not getting paid for it. And yeah. They're not asking you anything. You know, they're not expecting anything of you. And I just think it's really great the fact that so, so everyone is really nice and really positive and really constructive. And you can learn and benefit from these yeah. sort of people as well. You know, you can. Sort of play with them. I mean, you get to sort of do a bit of jamming every now and again, which is always good fun. And... Yeah, so I was going to say, so um, obviously, one of the for me, one of the benefits of that as well is that I can go to pretty much any open mic and I'll see somebody that I know. But yeah. as you said, um, it does sometimes, especially if people only know a dozen songs or something. After you've seen them three or four times, it can get. Um, I don't want to say repetitive because I don't want to be mean, but you know. And as, but as you say, I mean, you're guilty of it too. So am I. We yeah. we 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 all yeah. are, you know. But hopefully this lockdown period one of the silver linings might be that when we are finally kind of all allowed back out of our cages hopefully everyone will have some new material <laughs> <laughs> i think i mean i certainly hope so i mean i know i'm gonna have i mean there's been three or four songs which i've done at least where i've thought i mean there's been a couple that i've recorded that i've never done an open mic yeah and they've actually come out a lot better than i thought they were going to so they're definitely ones that will be it's okay it's all getting added to my set list yeah, cool. Something to look forward to. And, is, and the sooner the better, frankly. I'm going a little bit. Yeah, we. I'm missing the pubs and the music. I mean, I, I yeah, it was one of those. Where it's like after a week, I was missing them. Now I'm really missing <laughs> them. You know. <laughs> cool. Um, I just got one last question um, to end on as well. Well, it's actually two questions. Which is, um, yeah. what have you got planned next, and where can people find you online to follow you? Okay. Um, 
not got a lot. I mean, I've been, I've done um, three sort of live streams. Yeah, oh, the uh, um, Shallow Foray lockdown. sessions, right? So I mean, at the moment, um, planning next. I mean, it, it would have been Belfast this month, wouldn't it? Yeah. But I'm guessing that won't be happening now, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but I've been doing these live streams. There's a place. Uh, my my father-in-law's got a place in the Alps. Yeah. Like a like a chalet place. Mm -hmm. And there's when we go over there, uh, there's a really good open mic scene sort of in the local area. Mm -hmm. And uh, it it mostly English people. So and again, it's really friendly, really welcoming. And I'm, I've been up there two, two or three times, and I know a few of the guys. And one of the guys up there is hosting this. Um, session site mm -hmm. where basically anyone can contact them and go I want to do a set and he gives you a slot and a time and you basically advertise it yourself and you do live sets on there so I've, I've done three on there I should, put, I should probably do another one of those at some point um, I'm still publishing my open mic so late I'm, mm -hmm. um, my aim is to get to the big 100 on yeah. the daily so 100 daily posts of a different song every day is my aim and that's only about a week or so away now to Sweet. complete that yeah. Uh, my own stuff. Um, I'm on Spotify. I'm on Amazon. I'm on Google. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on all the usual sort of media sites. Uh, I've got a YouTube channel. If you do a search for Colin Upfield, I'm on there. Uh, I've got a Bandcamp. Uh, there's a mini album on Bandcamp with all my recorded stuff on. Uh, again, so that's under Colin Upfield. So the advantage of, of having quite a unique surname is I can usually keep, so get to keep my entire name. I haven't got yeah. to be Colin Four Seven Three or something. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and my Facebook page, I've been publishing um, uh, like a weekly, um, have you heard of Smule? Yeah. It's like a karaoke app. Oh, yes, so yeah, I've yeah, yeah. I've, I've been publishing a weekly sort of karaoke performance yeah. from um, Smule on my uh, Facebook page. And I've also got a Smule account, obviously, and there's a whole load of songs on there if people want to hear them. Cool. So, yeah. I'm everywhere, <laughs> but yeah. nobody, but nobody, nobody, nobody to me. <laughs> well, hopefully, some people will, will check you out after after this as well. Um, I have yeah. I have one last follow up question too, which is: so you've got your big 100th post coming up. Have you yeah. have you got a specific? Uh, ah, I can't say it. Have you got a specific song in mind? I haven't. Um, I was wondering. I think I think what what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the, the hundred. Yeah. And then I will repost my music is the glue song. Cool. Because that. Because that was written specifically for that site, and that, and that would be I would apart from the occasional post, then I think I will rest because <laughs> yeah. um, it's getting harder and harder to um, obviously come up with new songs. Yeah, no, that sounds and, like, like a the perfect. I want to play, and that's the difference. Yeah, well, that that sounds like the perfect way to end it as well. And as you say, with yeah. it, and then to to hit your hundred, and then to repost that song, I think I think it's perfect. So cool. Well, hopefully uh, people will check you out, and then they'll uh, within the next week or so they'll be able to. <laughs> listen to the yep. to music is the glue again thank you very much colin upfield for joining me as he said you can follow him online and whatnot and uh this is one of his tracks so this is uh, didn't die in memoriam mix by colin upfield
Love music, love talk, love Wickham Sound. Did you know there's a new council coming for Buckinghamshire? From the 1st of April, the new Buckinghamshire Council will replace the existing county and district councils. Don't worry, your bins will still be collected. We'll continue to run libraries, maintain the roads, look after vulnerable adults and children, and there'll be all the day-to-day services you are used to. One council will make it simpler for you. We'll be able to improve services together and give you better value for money. Buckinghamshire Council. Your Buckinghamshire, your council. A better future together. We understand that everyday life is going to become challenging over the next few weeks and months. But we want to reassure you that the Wickham Sound team are here to inspire and entertain you with local, relevant programmes and information. We followed government advice and set our team up to work remotely. We have taken all the steps we can to keep our team safe so we can be here for you. Local businesses. Perhaps you have closed temporarily or have found a new and innovative way of working. If you want to reach customers with your message, get in touch with us today. We can get through this if we all pull together. Please stay at home, stay tuned to Wickham Sound for the latest information, and do get in touch with us to let us know how you're doing, if you'd like a song played, or just want us to say hello to you. This is Wickham Sound. So now we've reached that part of the show where I share a book, a TV show and or a movie and uh, an album to keep you entertained till next week's show. So I guess we'll start with movies and I'm going to recommend the Karate Kid movies. Basically, I've got to the point now where I've watched everything on my YouTube list. I've watched everything on my Netflix list. I've basically watched everything that I already own as well. So, um, for some reason I was thinking about, like, old 80s movies, so over the last week or so I have watched every Karate Kid movie, apart from the 2010 or whatever remake, and I've also watched all of the Indiana Jones movies as well. Um, I actually really enjoyed the Karate Kid movies, I mean, they are a bit cringy, and in some places they haven't aged particularly well, but for just something sort of casual to have on in the background, they were alright, so, um... Yeah, I have no other reason to uh, recommend them. Really, they they're quite nostalgic things for me to rewatch. Uh, when I'm gonna I'm gonna go go and see my mum soon because we're gonna be able to form a bubble together. So uh, we're probably gonna watch Muppet Treasure Island again. I don't think it's the best film ever made, but it you know it gives me the happy feels. So yeah, this week, Karate Kid. Uh, for this week, <laughs> for this week's uh, album. Sorry, I can't believe I've just recommended Karate Kid on on radio. Uh, I never thought that would ever happen. For this week's album, I'm going to recommend uh, Time the Revelator by Gillian Welsh. So she's uh, a sort of a folky singer-songwriter. She actually performed with her musical partner, David Rollins, who is a really, really good guitarist. 
one of my favorite clips of any guitarist ever is uh, these two they're playing a song called red clay halo and he takes a capo out of his pocket puts it on the guitar while playing the guitar and then just plays a solo and then takes the capo back off again later I, i've never seen anyone else do that it was awesome uh, this album, Time the Revelator, is it's sort of a concept album. Um, there are actually two different songs focusing around April the 14th. And this is uh, Ruination Day. It was the day that the Titanic sank, actually very early in the morning. It struck the I iceberg on the 13th, late at night. Uh, it was the day that President Lincoln got shot. I believe it was, uh, there, was there was a massacre, some, some sort of massacre in, in the US at, uh, on this date as well. So it kind of brings these all together, but... It's one of my favourite albums in general, but I've been um, meaning to, I don't know, I was going to say meaning to re-listen to it actually, but I did listen to it on my walk today, but um, because the duo Larkin Poe, uh, these are two sisters who rock really hard, one of them plays a lap steel guitar, um, and so they're kind of quite bluesy, but they've uh, released some new tunes on YouTube, and one of their new songs is basically a nod to Gillian Welsh, uh, because fast cars outside my house, don't mind me. Because it uses a lot of the concepts from this album, um, but also it uses some key phrases which, you know, it mark it out as definitely inspired by Gillian Welsh. Because, for example, they use the phrase, God moves on the water, Casey Jones. I don't know, there's, there's no way that you're convincing me that that's just a weird coincidence. Although, imagine if it was, that would be amazing. The odds of that. <laughs> Okay, and this week's book. Well, I try. I'm going to try not to recommend Asimov because I've already had a little little old chat about him. I've also got some um, F. Scott Fitzgerald and also some horrible histories books actually that uh, I'll be reading soon. But this week I want to talk about an indie novel. It's called Life After Dane, so you might be able to guess why I'm a little biased towards it. It's written by a guy called Edward Lorne, who is a booktuber and a friend of mine. Uh, he's really into Stephen King and it kind of shows in this novella, but it's also like, it's kind of like a supernatural thriller, I guess. Uh, Dane Peters, I think, was the name of the character, and he was uh, the truck stop dentist, a serial killer, and he's been put to death by lethal injection before the novel begins. So the entire book is told from the point of view of his highly religious mother as she kind of comes to terms with the past, and um, strange things start going on as well, so... Definitely one I would recommend if you like something a little bit creepy. Plus, it's always good to support indie authors, especially uh, now when, you know, the economy is terrible. <laughs> Great. Anyways, that pretty much brings us to the end of this week's episode. So thanks, as always, for tuning in. My name's Dane Cobain. This is The Art Show on Wickham Sound 106.6 FM. We're here every Tuesday from 7 till 8 p.m. You can also uh, find us on Facebook just by searching The Art Show Wickham Sound. And if you want to get in touch with me here at the studio, you can email dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk. Next week, we're hopefully going to be joined by Tony Goff and or The Broken Colours. So uh, Tony Goff is a local musician and songwriter and the, the Broken Colours are his backing band. So we'll see whether we get just Tony or Tony and his band. We're cutting it short for time this week, so I'm going to leave you with one last super short song. This is Agatha Christie by Occasionally David. I'll see you next week. Agatha Christie came to tea When, when, when She knocked on the door and asked for me When, when, when She arrived at ten past three When, when, when This is Wickham Sound 